This is a boss melter, literally. And now we are going to test it on that thing here. Yep, seems not overpowered at all. Hey fellow travelers, and welcome on the channel. This time, we are going to look into an extremely powerful build based on the Plasma Cutter. We are jumping right to the boss fights. They won't last long anyway. I'll keep the comments to a minimum. Just enjoy. Build breakdown later on the video. This boss has the Hardy modifier, so it has 15% more health. And the health bar still goes down this way. It is important to keep up Bullet Storm and Rampage all the time to not run out of ammo. That was just 1 minute and 31 seconds from the first hit. Not too bad at all. To be honest, using all the pre-buffs and reapplying them at every stage can be a little difficult and need some practice, but you just can go without that. The damage will be still very high. If you enjoy the video and what I'm doing here, maybe consider giving it a like and subscribe to my channel to stay updated about the latest content. But one of the most challenging thing on this build is to watch the plasma cutter not overheating. If you keep hitting the weak spots, there should be enough time to trigger the heat vents. Just keep an eye on the gauge and better reload before, or give it a short break. The Ravager here has the Hardy and the Thick Skin modifier. So 15% more health, and we do reduce damage as well. Just keep that in mind. It is probably a good advice to use the Dark Fluid Concussion on this boss. This really helps to dodge more often and get a little extra distance when you do.
Again, around 1 minute and 30 seconds. That was something, right? So let's now have a closer look at the build. As you maybe already have perceived, we are going to use the Gunslinger and the Challenger archetypes for this. I really love the loaded Prime perk, as it just reloads both of your guns and gives you infinite ammo for 8 seconds. With Swift Shot, we gain 15% fire rate, 25% ranged damage, and 5% critical chance. As we are aiming for as much fire rate as we can, this is a must-have. The 10% increased reload speed from Quick Hands also helps. When using our Relic, we will get an additional 15% damage increase. But this is really just the icing on the cake and not really necessary in the most encounters. As for the skills, the one and only Bullet Storm. The 20% fire rate and 50% reload speed increase are top notch. Let's head over to the Challenger. The close quarters damage perk is dependent on your distance to the target, but the 35% damage increase and the 10% critical chance are definitely worth it. As we are using our skills all the time, the intimidating presence gives us a nice little damage reduction for 15 seconds. Another 10% damage increase, and also some damage reduction when using our Relic. As said before, not really necessary at all. The Rampage skill, in my opinion, is one of the strongest overall. Not that it gives you a 15% increase in fire rate, 25% reload, and 15% movement speed. This effect is doubled when Berserk triggers. On top of that, there will be another 25% increase in damage. For the loadout, there will be three different types you can try, depending on your playstyle. We start with the full DPS, as I used it in the boss fights, the balanced, and one for more survivability. For the full DPS loadout, we use the Nightweaver's Grudge, since it will give you 20% critical chance, as well as haste, as it perfectly pairs with the Atonement Fold, which beside of that also gives you another 10% critical chance. The Akari Warband is probably one of the strongest trinkets in the game, but resides on your ability to perfectly dodge. The trait Untouchable will help you trigger this more often, by the way. But the 15% critical chance and the 15% critical damage are very powerful. But the key item for this build is definitely the Devoured Loop. As we are at 95% critical chance with a fire rate of 82%, this thing will go crazy with resetting your skill cooldowns. No worries, we will compensate the damage taken increase with the Barkskin trait. With the Farin Sigil, we achieve the Heat Sink mod will be ready before the gun overheats. Well, you have to make sure that the majority hits the weak spot. As mentioned before, Always keep an eye on the gauge and better reload or stop firing instead of letting it overheat. As for the Relic, we go with the Tranquil Heart as it compensates the bleeding damage from the Atonement Fold. And for the Fragments, we use Weak Spot Damage, Ranged Critical Damage, and Ranged Fire Rate. Before we go to the next loadout and the weapons, I have made a comparison where you can see the differences at a glance at the end of the video. On the balanced loadout, we use the Probability Cord instead of the Akari Warband, which gives you a 30% increase in critical damage. And for the Survivability loadout, we go with the Alchemy Stone instead of the Probability Cord, which gives you a nice additional 6% lifesteal. For both, the balanced and survivability loadout, we just use the ranged critical chance instead of the weak spot damage fragment. We still have 90% critical chance, so that is enough. The Plasma Cutter, aka the Boss Melter, comes with the Heat Sink mod, which prevents the weapon from overheating and also a damage increase. Paired with the Momentum Mutator, it will also give us an additional 30% critical chance and 30% critical damage. 
As for the secondary gun and the melee weapon, you can go with whatever you want. You won't use them much anyway. For the sake of simplicity, all three loadouts are summarized here at a glance. So you can choose whatever suits you best, or even experiment with your own one. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and got something useful from it. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know in the comments. Cheers.